Welcome back to Release the Crafted. Priscilla here with a quick journal share for you guys today. Pretty excited. I just finished this book. It was for a special order. Uh, the customer requested a book in which they could uh, write some devotionals to Egyptian deities. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience in that area, so we agreed to go with a book with a general sort of Egyptian theme. So this is what I came up with. Um, some other requests were the, that it was uh, black and gold. So I used those colors pretty heavily throughout. And um, as you can see, I kept the cover pretty simple, but I wanted to sort of, I don't know, evoke some of the uh, iconography of Egypt by stacking up the papers in like a pyramid style. I added this scarab beetle to the front, and this is a sculpture um, from Egypt that I got. Um, I got most of the pictures that are like this from the Smithsonian's uh, open source site. Um, so if you see those, that's where they came from. They're pretty cool. There's some, like, really vintage stuff. There's some stuff from the 40s, but then there's also, like, stuff from the 1840s and the 1860s, which I thought was really neat. Little, like, hand-drawn sketches of the place. Um, so those are also in here as well. Um, so I did the cover in this really pretty, like, black velvet. It's got great hand feel. So I'm really loving how that came out. This book is only, uh, two inches with three signatures. And we're cracking it open. All right, make sure I'm in frame. There we go. So uh, for the inside, I used um, some pretty heavily textured fabrics. I kind of wanted to um, sort of elicit the feel of like how they would wrap stuff. Like even books got wrapped up in like heavy fabric when they were buried into like tombs and pyramids. And also this paper, it's actually like handmade paper that I got from Kim. Thank you, Kim. Um, that has like some fibers through it, and it kind of reminded me, and this is probably weird, I don't know if this works for you guys as well, but it reminded me sort of of like mummy bandages, and so I thought that was like a fun thing, and then I just like picked out all the texture with some gold wax on top to keep with the theme. So that's what I did for the inside covers. Uh, for this book, I made a kit for it because I didn't actually have a lot of like Egypt themed papers. Um, so I made a kit to go with it. That will be in my shop soon. Um, and I had some really cool imagery. Um, as you can see, there's a Bastet here. There's Isis in there. And just some of the like hieroglyphs throughout. And I tried to keep it in the same sort of theme. I didn't go like solid hardcore black on everything because I also wanted to sort of incorporate the colors of like the pyramids and stuff like that. So there's some browns and some like tan, parchment, papyrus colors, things like that. Um, and then I just added these really cool tabs to the ends. Um, nothing too like crazy because I wanted to um, make sure that there was enough left undone, if that makes sense, for um, the person who's getting this to add their own stuff in because they are going to add in their own stuff. And this book is going to be used mostly for writing, so I didn't want to like choke it up with a bunch of stuff. But here is a belly man and I embossed um, an onk onto the front. And then there is just a tag, and then this really cool drawing of like the Egyptian coast, which I just backed on some coffee dyed paper. I have one of those old uh, Discovery Kid encyclopedias, so I used a couple of those pages in here. So there's some fun um, information in here with some really cool imagery. Again, we have Bastet, and I have a bunch of coffee dyed paper that I just sort of like lightly stamped on to sort of grunge it up and sort of evoke that old stonework pyramid, once again, sort of feeling to it. There's another page from the kit. You'll see throughout, I added like gold, just sort of randomly through the pages. Um, maybe like some gold leaf has been like spilled from like the person who was like painting the hieroglyphs and they got it, you know, throughout the book because they don't, you know, they don't paint very neatly. So you'll see it throughout. And I thought that was just sort of a fun touch. And then that's the back page of the kit. This is from a book that I got from April, so thank you, April, for that. That definitely came in clutch. Um, so it's got some really cool, like, Egyptian imagery, and then you can, like, journal on the back or stick something down or whatever on the other side. Another one of those Discovery Kids pages. This one's about gods and goddesses. Like I said, uh, the customer wants to use this to do his uh, devotional work, so I thought uh, that was an appropriate page. And here is just another tab. This is actually a pocket page with um, one of those Smithsonian drawings on an index card. 
This is the center of the first signature. Little fun journaling spot. Some really cool stuff in here that I just really enjoyed working with. Um, it was interesting because I haven't actually... I don't have a lot of experience with this kind of stuff, but it was fun to like put it together and learn about it while I was putting it together. So I learned some interesting things and I always, always enjoy learning new things. Just a little top loading pocket here. Another drawing on some coffee dyed paper. Got this really cool brick patterning. So like I said, uh, lots of writing space in this one really pretty picture. I love this picture. I've had this image like in my image stash, I guess, waiting to put like into a kit. And so I'm glad I was able to finally use it because it's really pretty. And then it's the back side of those pages, just a little piece of coffee dyed paper, so, like a scrap for him to journal on. And then I put these big leaf images in, um, mostly because I really like the like hammered gold look of them and I think they go really well with the rest of the kit but I thought it'd be fun to just like use them as the writing space on the pages instead of like you know putting in like a paper or a notepad or something in there and then there is the back of the first signature and onto the second one there is a hippopotamus statue um, I learned that there isn't just a hippopotamus deity in ancient Egypt but that they were really terrified of hippopotamuses so they put them on everything sort of as like a protection from hippopotamuses hippopotami I don't know what the plural for hippopotamus is, but I thought it was really interesting, so I put that in here. There's another drawing, and then there is a little Hanalinda tag, and I put a um, sort of hieroglyphic symbol whose name I learned and said I was going to remember so I could tell you guys what it was, and then I forgot, so... But I looked it up. It's a thing. There is some page from the kit, some more copy dyed paper. This is from a book of art that has like um, some stuff on like how they constructed the pyramids and how they were art on their own and stuff like that as well as sort of the themes of ancient Egyptian art so I thought that was interesting and popped that in here. This is a page from that book April sent me and it flips out to make some more writing space in frame. And then hippo. <laughs> Um, this one's about the Valley of the Kings. So there's just some cool stuff here. I used a lot of hieroglyphics in the page. Um, and some old, like, um, hieroglyphic artwork and stuff that I could find. It's a bit about the pyramids. And here is a page from the kit. And then this is a top-loading pocket that has this cool, like, ancient tablet on it. And just some writing space on the back. I just left this in here peeking out a little bit, so one that I didn't forget about it, like I usually do when I make a top loading pocket, but also so that they would know where it is. Here's some of that gold wax effect. Center of this signature with this cool, like, I forgot what this is also called because, you know, I looked all this stuff up before I started so I could tell you guys and then just threw all the information out of my brain, apparently. But some cool architecture that I thought would be neat. Um, I was gonna glue it down to the page, but then decided to leave it up in case he wanted to like stick something in there or like tuck it in, maybe like make it a pocket, I don't know. But I left it free floating so that more could be done. There's another tab, some really pretty imagery. And then this is a like altered envelope. It's not really like super anything crazy. It's made out of like this handmade paper. And when I embossed this, it like soaked up the embossing powder. I don't know if you guys can tell. Maybe I'll pick it up so you guys can see better. But it like soaked it up so it's not as shiny as it usually is except for like in a couple of spots. Which I thought was interesting. Because um, it just sort of looks like aged. Like it's been on the pyramid wall for a long time. Which I thought was an interesting effect so I didn't re like go over it again. Because I like how that looks. But that flips open. And then there's a little journaling spot. Another one of those old drawings from Egypt. So it's open, another journaling spot. And then this is a statue of Sobek, the uh, alligator Nile god. And a little tiny tag in there. Flips open. And then there is a pocket back here. This really pretty, like, lady 
statue carving that I cut out of that Discovery Kids Encyclopedia with the journaling spot here. And then, of course, it's not a book about Egypt without the Sphinx. So that's here. And then here's where the actual envelope is. And that opens up into a large pocket. And I just stuck the extra piece of this in here to use as a journaling card. So here's the other side of that pyramid page. And am I in frame? I don't know. Because I'm sitting down and trying to like look up into the camera as I do this. Or the kit. I like how the lines came out on this page. Sort of echoes the lines on this page, but bigger, obviously. And then another page from the kit. This is just a paper tab. But I like how it looks. Some more pyramids. Yes, yeah, so this was fun to make. This is a Kefra. Kefra. I don't know how you pronounce it because clearly. Um, Egyptian dialects are outside of my scope, but I remember that it started with K and might have sounded like Capra. It's a cool, like, scarab symbol. There is an index card, a tag that I threw almost off the table. Just another Hermelinda style tag. And I don't know, like, I know, um, the book was supposed to be mainly black and gold, but it had, like, a really strong calling to, like, the color red as I was designing the pages, so I used red throughout just sort of tie that together. This is all about priests and temples. Which I thought also was appropriate in a devotional book. And then it's got like some interesting stuff that you would find on like ceremonial altars. A little tiny ribbon tab. Some more really cool artwork. Another scarab beetle and this owl, which is cool. I might start putting this owl everywhere. I really like that owl. And then there is a little pyramid uh, paper bag pocket. This one is empty, so more stuff can be stuck in there. And then here is sort of part of a map of the, like, ancient territory of the pharaohs before, like, the restructuring of Egypt. With another page from that art book. And then here is the center of this signature with a big Isis. And the back of that. And then the back of that map page. And then in this little, the other side of the paper bag are two uh, sort of inked, they're waxed up edges, two little wax tags. I don't know how you call that. What are words, guys? Explain it. And then some more interesting statuary. And then on the back here is this goat, which is sacred to several deities. But I'm not going to tell you which ones, because why? But <laughs> I cut this out. I fussy cut this out of that book. Because this goat is, even though it's like the sacred beast of a god, is like carefully stepping over this cat, because cats were sacred to Egypt, and this cat wasn't going to move. And somebody like took the time to sculpt and carve this image of their deity stepping over a cat that won't move. And I just found that to be the most hilarious thing on the planet. So I had to put it in this book, because it just gave me so much joy. And I wanted to make sure it got incorporated. There's a little coffee dyed card. Um, that book that April sent me, like, was some kid's book. And he wrote and highlighted, like, or underlined all over that book, which is hilarious. Like, I love when that kind of stuff happens. So I wanted to include one of those pages where he was just sort of writing out his little ideas in the book. Here's the last page of the kit. The cool scarab dude. And there is the back of the book. I really like how this came out. As you can see, it's full. It sits up top real nice. But it's also got, like, room to grow. So I don't even need to, um, like, have a closure for it. Um, I think I'll include something just so, like, he'll have something when he wants to close it up or once it gets, like, stuffed and crazy looking. But I'm really happy with how this came out. And um, I really hope that they like it. They haven't seen this yet. Of course, you guys will be seeing it after uh, my customer sees it. But, uh, yeah. That's, I guess, it, because now I'm just going to start rambling about uh, this book and all my thoughts and feelings on it. Um, yeah, so it was fun working in a uh, territory I don't usually typically uh, dabble in, and I had a good time, and I hope that you guys like the kit when it hits the shop, which will be probably the same day this comes out. And um, that's it. That's going to be it for me, you guys. I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. Wear a mask, please. Um... 
people like me with compromised immune systems will die if you don't. And, uh, you know, if you want me to die, I guess that's fine. I mean, it's your choice, but you could keep me alive by wearing a mask, and I would appreciate that. Um, but not nearly as much as I appreciate your faces. Thank you guys so much for being here with me on my channel. Um, if you could, give it a like. Maybe YouTube won't keep burying me. Um, but that's gonna be it for me for now, you guys. I'll check you all out in the next one. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, bye!